Hey there, fellas. So look, I've got me this lovely frying pan, coated with Teflon, whatever you put onto it doesn't stick, and instead handily slips around. But why don't we try covering a piston with Teflon coating? Let's do this. I suggest we go into the theory. Anyone who has looked at a new piston noticed that there's coating, the materials are different, every company has its trade secrets. But most of the time they use a sort of Teflon paint. The idea is to help the piston slip inside the cylinder. But we want to use the ubiquitous frying pan grade coating for our pistons. First things first, the pistons need to be prepared. By that I mean subjected to thermal treatment and sandblasting. After that we apply three Teflon layers to the piston. First one is primer, second is the base, third is the clear essentially. Then the piston is baked and those three layers merge into a single layer of Teflon coating. We've coated the pistons with Teflon, now they need to spend some time in the oven. Temperature is 425 degrees Celsius, they'll be in there for two hours, after which they will be ready for use. Check this out guys, we've coated these pistons with some Teflon, and these look pretty nice. Terrific even. They're nice and slippery. Some regular old frying pan grade Teflon. First you've got primer, then base some sort of clear, the whole thing is baked at high temperature, and this is the end result of that process. Now we need to measure the piston's external diameter with the coating, and measure the cylinders to prevent these pistons from getting pinched. Time for some measurements. Prior to the coating, the stock pistons had a diameter of 79 millimeters, and now after we've coated them, the diameter is at 78.8, meaning the clearance between the piston and the cylinder wall is at 0 0.05. Check this out, guys. We've assembled the engine, the Teflon-coated pistons are in, that's all good. Now we just need to start the engine and see how it runs. It should run normally, but the coating is a factor. There should be less friction inside the engine, and in theory that should mean the engine won't be getting too hot. I mean to say it'll be slower to heat up, but we'll see once we start it. Also, as we all know, this sort of coating is supposedly prone to being damaged by kitchenware like forks, spatulas, knives and so on, so it is susceptible to mechanical damage and allegedly can be easily scraped off. So on the one hand there should be less friction, but if it starts to peel off that might hamper normal engine operation. But we won't know for sure until we start this engine, so let's do that, allow it to run, then we go for a drive and see how these pistons behave. Let's go. It started well, that's all good, but I think it might be misfiring. You'll see that it's shaking. But let's allow it to warm up. Maybe it just needs to warm up. Check this out, the engine is at operating temp. It has been running for a while and it doesn't seem to want to overheat. But this is to be expected. This is about how a well-tuned lot is going to run. I guess it's time to head out. So let's take this outside and see what this engine is all about. Let's go. No difference in the driving dynamics. The engine is running just like it should. No issues whatsoever to report.
Engine temperature is at 100 degrees Celsius. But then that's a good thing even, because, well, this is a non-stick coating we are dealing with here. Right? Right. Now, when an engine overheats, thermal expansion occurs. And when an engine severely overheats, uh, parts stick and seize. But these pistons have got a trick coating, and so let's put some heat into this engine. I am super curious to see whether they stick or not. Okay, let's get to it. What does it say on the gauge? 105? 105. It's boiling that tells us the engine is overheating. Extra load should make the engine extra warm. Okay, what just happened? Something went boom. Something's hissing. The radiator exploded. The radiator exploded for real? Holy moly, dude. Operating temperature must have been really high. I think it would be fair to say. Let's replace the radiator and uh, keep right on going. Warm the engine up once again, see how high we can get the temperature up to. And how high of a temperature it can handle with the pistons coated with Teflon. Let's carry on. So here's where we're at with this, guys. We gave this a bit of thought, and do we really even need the radiator? As it's a weak link that constantly goes, we've removed it from the picture. We filled the engine with water, everything is good. The important thing now would be to get it warm, and see how it behaves when it's nice and hot. Is it going to seize or not? So look here, on the stock temperature sensor, the needle is creeping into the red zone. Come on. Soldiering on, the oil is also overheating, as is everything else. So apparently this sort of temperature isn't phasing this engine. 144 on the cylinder head. Really? Head is at 150, block is at 135. Those sort of... chattery noises. They tell us that at these temperatures, the ignition timing is no longer suitable. 157 on the block. 172 on the head. Block is at 157. A regular engine, even fitted with a radiator, would have seized long ago in this sort of situation. It has happened to us in the past. I don't remember what exactly we were doing, but we were trying to overheat an engine, and ultimately it seized. Let me see. Oh, it can even do a burnout. Still has some torque, then. It is emitting some nasty noises. Block is at 182. 182! This is the beginning of the end, guys. Now they're starting to stick. There we go. Can you do a quick temperature check? 195 on the block. 195 on the block? 204 on the head. 204 on the head, incredible. Starter motor is overwhelmed, poor thing. The engine temperature is way beyond critical at this point. But even at this sort of temperature, the starter motor is able to crank it. What I want to know is what happened with the non-stick coating that we've uh, covered the pistons with. Uh, 
Check this out, guys. We thought things were going wonderfully, with the engine being able to run at super high temperature. But now that we've removed the cylinder head, we see that things aren't as peachy as we imagined. Over here we've found some kind of dust, which must have been flying around when the engine was stalling. Moving around inside the cylinders, and now you'll see it's covering the piston head and the cylinder walls. What this dust is, well, honestly, I can't tell you that yet. But I'd say more than likely, this is that Teflon that we coated the pistons with. It was getting scraped off of the sides of the pistons from the looks of it. Also in cylinder 3 I'm seeing scratches, which is not good at all. Check that out. There's still a bit of Teflon left on this piston. There's scraping on the bottom of the skirt, must have been wobbling, but over here I'm seeing clean aluminum, so it burned off in this spot. Temperature was getting really high. Perhaps the dust came from off of here, when the engine began to overheat. Number three, and this is looking way worse. Here we see deformation, and this one got stuck to the cylinder wall. Also the rings have gotten stuck inside their grooves, no material on the head, the Teflon has been roasted, and it was getting scraped off from the sides, but no surprise there. Doesn't look like it was working. Also, the pin is stuck, it overheated and it was lacking lubrication. It's all blue. It's blue inside. Also, there are scratches on the cylinder wall, and that is very bad, because they are quite deep. So initially we were thinking this is some kind of sorcery, but then if we were to really think this through, what sort of four-stroke engine can even withstand temperatures in excess of 200 degrees Celsius? You can be the judges here, guys. I know what I've taken away here. An engine that hasn't been modified in any way, in my opinion, cannot take this sort of temperature. I mean, this one didn't survive either, but it was running pretty well up until a certain point. You guys saw it all for yourselves, and that's all I got for you. Subscribe, catch you guys later.